In this video, I'm going to talk to you about our experiences on a Year 3 Psychology module, particularly how we've diversified the teaching and assessment to meet the demands of increased student numbers, and more recently, COVID-19. So, for context then, Site 344 is a 15 credit optional final year psychology module focused on psychological issues in adult ageing and I've been the module coordinator for the last couple of years but I've contributed to the module since 2013. Historically there are only about 40 students registered on the module but due to changes in the way in which the final year modules were allocated we've seen a massive increase in the number of registrations resulting in over 200 students now registering each year. This presented a challenge, but also an opportunity for us as teaching staff on the module. A challenge because of pressures to convey material to large groups, including practical challenges involving room sizes, interaction, assessing the needs of individuals and timetabling, but also challenges in terms of student experience and meeting that challenge, and addressing social isolation, disengagement from students, and not being able to assess levels of understanding. But as I said, it also presented an opportunity to redesign the module curricula, its learning activities and assessment to engage students, but also staff in a way that is in line with the Liverpool curriculum framework. Not just the authentic assessment, active learning and research connected teaching, but particularly inclusivity and digital fluency. So a little on the pedagogic approach of the module. Essentially, we wanted to move from low engagement to high engagement moving away from traditional didactic transmission of material where the student is a passive recipient of information towards multiple methods of teaching and personalised learning opportunities. One great and very well documented way of doing this is through an active flipped learning approach. I'll say more exa about exactly how this operates on Site 344 in a moment, but essentially we provide personalised pre-class learning where students find their own reading, which promotes a deeper level of engagement and ownership over the material, and development of higher order thinking skills and increased collaborative learning between peers. We also wanted the debate teaching and content to be research connected. So we provide four controversies relevant to the module topic and focus on research content and research methodologies and applying this content to real world settings and also the teaching team, myself included, all have expertise in the area of ageing and deliver debates that are relevant to our own areas. And finally, in the same way we wanted the content to be research connected to real world problems, we also wanted the debates to be linked to authentic real world assessments. So the debates are linked to a scene essay exam where students choose one out of three debate topics to write a position style paper, either for or against a position statement. This provides an opportunity for students to demonstrate their critical understanding of the concepts, ideas, theories and evidence. So here's a bit of a timeline to show how the debates work over the course of the semester. In week one, I introduce the debate format, how it's going to work and why we're doing it so the students understand the value of it. Specifically, I provide guidance on how to find different types of evidence as part of the flipped learning exercise, specifically grey literature that students are typically less familiar with. Finally, I ask students to form their own peer prep groups to share reading and bounce ideas off one another ahead of the debate itself. Two weeks before the debate is scheduled to take place, so usually around week two, I upload any reading to Canvas and students are prompted to continue with their self-guided reading and they're encouraged to meet up with their peer prep group, whether that be online or if appropriate in person. The debate session itself is a timetabled synchronous teaching session where students follow a Zoom link. I send students into breakout rooms of about five to eight students for a 10 to 15 minute consolidation session where they discuss their reading and thoughts on the debate question. And a scribe, one member of the group, summarises their thoughts onto a Padlet post. Importantly, I tend to visit each breakout room during this initial session to ensure that there are no technical difficulties and to ensure everyone is engaged. Then I bring students back into the main room for a 30 minute whole group discussion where I use the various Padlet contributions to facilitate a discussion between the different groups. Finally, I run a five minute plenary at the end of the session to summarise the main themes and set the students up for next time. 
Our use of technology enhanced learning, such as Padlet and Zoom, ensures both digital fluency and inclusivity among students. Padlet facilitates group work and independent learning. It increases engagement by addressing diffusion of responsibility and gives confidence to students who may not have felt able to speak in a traditional classroom environment. Padlet's also become a legacy resource that can be used long after the teaching session has ended, as a revision resource, for example. The use of the Zoom breakout room function also provides a small group learning environment which increases students' engagement and confidence. The breakout rooms create a forum within which students can consolidate their reading and importantly discuss topics in depth with their peers in a collaborative way. The debate component of Site 344 is consistently highlighted as good practice by students. Here is a flavour of the student feedback from the 2020-21 module evaluation survey, and these are typical of the kind of comments we receive on the module. In the first quote, the student says that the module as a whole is thought-provoking, engaging and interesting, and has continued to be delivered well, despite the unprecedented challenges presented by COVID-19. The second quote highlights the unique nature of the debates and how it's unlike any other module being delivered in year three. And the final quote praises the interactive nature of the module as a whole and explains how the online synchronous sessions, the debates, simulated a face-to-face -face learning environment and how they'd overcome anxiety as a result. I also asked two students from the 2021-22 academic year to give me their thoughts on the debate component of Site 344. I participated in the debate section of the Adult Ageing module in which I interacted with members of my cohort to discuss and synthesise peer-reviewed and grey literature in order to debate topics such as spirituality and ageing in place. This was completed online via Zoom and I enjoyed the ability to meet students which I may not have talked to during my in-person teaching. I also enjoyed exploring further elements um, of the course that allowed me to deepen my understanding uh, with topics that I can use in my exams and even in my undergraduate dissertation. Um, and this method of teaching has helped me personally retain information really well, better than usual face-to-face -face teaching. I think because of the way the method is really active in the learning. And I would love to see this debate format applied to other modules throughout my years at university. I found the debates really good and engaging um, because they allow you to have a lot more direct communication with other students that you don't always have when you're in lectures and so you can bounce ideas off each other and it helps develop your thinking about the topic as a whole more. I think going forward something to add to it might be a place where you could share files or uh, resources of some of where you found your information uh, but overall it's helped me engage more with the topic and um, and really develop me thinking that I think hopefully will benefit me in the exams as well, which would be good. Um, the online side of things could carry on. I think that that would help the whole course. <laughs> reflection, we have received positive feedback from students in both module evaluations and staff student liaison committees. The feedback tells us that the debates increase collaboration and peer learning and provide a more dynamic learning environment. The Padlets in particular become a useful revision resource as they go beyond the lecture session. The quality of the responses on the authentic position essays also indicate a depth of understanding that was not seen previously. Finally, and something that doesn't get spoken about as much. The sessions are a highlight of the semester for staff teaching them. Because they're research connected, staff can share their expertise of current cutting edge research and students benefit massively from this. We have of course identified a couple of key areas for development on the module. The first concerns level of engagement with pre-class content and peer prep groups. Because this isn't compulsory, engagement level varies, but this is common across flipped learning approaches. The second area for development is that despite our best efforts, there are always students who lack the confidence to engage. So we are looking at supplementary methods of engagement, including quizzes, for example, 
But it's important to note that no teaching and learning approach is ever going to be 100% effective for 100% of people. In summary, lectures remain a useful method of communicating conceptual information to a large audience. However, we must diversify our provision to keep up with demand. And though it's not without its issues, using debates or controversies relevant to the module topic and integrating technology, we are able to create a more fun and interactive classroom environment that encourages collaboration and appears to have helped students develop a deeper understanding of the content. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to chat about anything I've spoken about, you can contact me on wjd at liverpool.ac.uk or you can follow me on Twitter at Dr Wizwas.